college football lover to hate it is America's sport. Children grow up dreaming of playing a place like this and playing in front of millions, man. It just gets us happy thinking about it. The offers, the school visits, the fan. We work hard to dream for it all. But what about the ones who don't get it? The seniors with no offers, no interest, and who've gone on no visits. What about them? I have nothing. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Cameron Joseph, aka Cam25, and this is my YouTube channel, Cam25. I started this YouTube channel around 2019, and it's just grown so much ever since. My goal is to play college football, and my challenge is that I don't have any offers. But am I gonna give up? No. Am I gonna keep working? Yes. Now I guess it's time to tell y'all my story. What is going on, y'all boys? It's Cam25. It's another video today. I got you guys a different kind of video today. Today, I will be telling you what life is like for a senior with no offers. There's younger kids who don't understand what it's like to be a senior with no offers. So I will be telling you guys everything that happened in my junior and senior year and why I don't have any offers now and the situation I'm in now. So that's basically the whole point of this video. I'm telling my story to you guys because I want to help you guys get to where you want to be. Everyone out there has a purpose, even those of you not subscribed to this channel, man. Every single one of you have purpose. I have officially came up with the name for you guys, the Five Fam, man. That's that's what it is, the Five Fam. And if you guys want to join the Five Fam, you already know what to do. Go hit that subscribe button. But uh, this is the comment of the week right here from my dog, man. Thank you. Let's get into this video, man. I don't want to waste any more time. My goal was to play on varsity my freshman year, and I was gonna ride that goal to the sunset. Bro, what are you talking about? That, that was sus, but uh, yeah, forget that, man. Cut that out, cut that out. Yeah, my goal was to start on varsity my freshman year, and I kept working for that goal, and honestly, the coaches, the way I got to the school I was at, Olympic Heights Community High School, I messaged one of the coaches telling them I was gonna be coming to the school, and how can I like get ready to go into it, and basically, the way it started was with, I started coming to the summer workouts, I started working, getting and building a relationship with the coaches. There was a freshman JV and varsity team and I got put on the JV team and that was still kind of, that was still pretty good, but I man, I wanted to play on varsity, bro. So uh, one thing that like really got to me was how slow I was. I was dirt slow. I was moving in slow motion. Like I'm talking, boom, 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 boom. It, I was slow and uh, I'm not the fastest right now, but I'm getting faster and I run about a 4.7 right now But uh, yeah, we getting there. That was basically my freshman year and at the end of my freshman year We made varsity bro, uh, but I did not get in the game at all uh, at the, the last two games I made it to varsity at the end of the year But uh, it was still an accomplishment that I was part of proud of and uh, we got somewhere We were leveling up. We were getting somewhere one thing. I forgot to mention is that they were a bad team like they went 5-5 five and five my freshman year, but my sophomore year, uh... Coming to the spring of my freshman year, walking in, I think everything's normal. I wanted to, at that point, I was getting tired of the school. I was, I, I just didn't like being there anymore. So I'm like, you know what? I'm about to transfer. So I talked to my mom. I talked to her. I started telling some of my homeboys, and uh, somehow the coach finds out because, you know, some people like to bladder their mouths a little too much. That's why you, when you guys are about to make big decisions like this, don't tell anybody. I felt like I had to stay there, but some, I, something was really telling me to leave, and I really wish I listened to that voice inside me. A coach convinced me, basically telling me that you have a chance to start at this school next year why would you why would you leave and go somewhere else you would have to start over do all this and basically what he's saying made sense to me so i decided to stay and uh a month later he transferred out <sighs> yeah the coaches left and that's when some coach from north carolina came and changed the whole program fast forward to summer that's when we're working that's when the coach the new coach starts seeing how good i truly am Coming into my sophomore year, I'm rotating. And honestly, I felt like I should have been starting, but the sole reason I wasn't starting at receiver is because they wanted the seniors to get their reps, even though I was probably the better receiver and I should have gotten my reps. Still balled out my sophomore year and did my thing, but uh, we went two and eight. Yeah, it was time for me to go. Fast forward to March of my sophomore year, we're going hard, I'm working hard, getting ready for spring, I'm ready to ball out, man. And then, Guess what hit? Coronavirus. Coronavirus. Well, Guess what hit? Stay at home. COVID. You already know. It was it was freaking COVID nineteen that hit that took away spring of my sophomore year going into junior year. But and I was still at the school by the way. I didn't transfer out. I lost my sophomore year of spring and going on into April. That's when 
We thought we were going on a three week break and it turned into seven months. And in those seven months, it's not like I was doing nothing. April of that year, I met my trainer, Coach Helaman of Bishop Vision Athletics. And this man right here, this man changed my life. And honestly, I don't know what I would do without him at all. I probably would not have the mindset I have right now. I probably would have quit Wait, YouTube right now. This man is honestly, he's one of the most important people in my life right now. He's impacted me truly. I love my mom too, by the way. It was around January of 2020 when I tried out for my first camp and I tried playing for my first 7 on 17. So me and my dad drove me down there and I basically went to the rivals camp, walked in, I was nervous. I, I remember this like it was yesterday. I walked up to the 40 line and I got set. I ran the 40, I thought I did good. It felt amazing and uh, I ran it the second time. It felt even better the second time. And uh, they, had, they wrote my number on the card they gave me my card and I looked at it. it said it said five two. Five two forty yard dash at receiver. When have you ever heard of a receiver running a five two forty yard dash? That took all of my confidence away and it broke me. It broke every hope I had of continuing to play football. This was my sophomore year. I took the card, I grabbed my stuff, and I walked off the field. That was the first time I've ever quit at something in my life. And this is the first time I've told somebody. I've never told anyone this. This is the first time I've ever said it on camera or anything. And when I walked off the field, I sat on the bench. And I was just thinking about life and everything. And I was just hurt. I was like, I was asking God, like, why would you, why would you give this plan for my, why would you give me this plan for my life if, if I was just gonna, if it was just gonna end like this? When my dad came to pick me up, he told me in the car, God told me in the car that, he gave his hardest battles to his strongest shoulders. So I didn't give up. So training with Coach Helam, I started doing what you guys probably follow me from, which is TikTok. And I started filming seven on sevens and started doing stuff like that. And basically having fun while I was in quarantine. And what I didn't realize is it would grow into what it grew into today. I've always wanted to be a YouTuber as a kid. I've always posted videos, TikToks, all of this and that. And they were doing pretty well. We did even made a video with destroying. Life was good, but football, COVID was, COVID in Florida was acting kind of different. So I we actually got to start playing football in August. That's when my first game of my junior year was, and I balled out. Actually, I absolutely balled out. Three touchdowns, two touchdowns. 200, 200 plus yards, two touchdowns, and three catches. So that was that was a really good game for me. I was proud of myself, and it was a statement game for me. The team we played was trash, so I balled out, and I was ready to ball out the next week. And I was getting ready for the next week game, and then we got we got absolutely destroyed. We got killed. The quarterback couldn't find me because he was too busy. He was getting sacked too much, and and that's when I realized like I need to leave this school. I can't be here any longer. So. I transferred in the middle of my junior year, and I lost my junior year. I transferred to a school called Atlantic Community High School, and honestly, looking back at it, it was one of the toughest decisions I ever, I, I couldn't even make the decision. My mom made it for me. I had no choice. If she would have made that decision, I don't honestly don't think I would be at Atlantic or the position I am right now. Because when I transferred to Atlantic, it absolutely changed my life. It was, it was a new experience. I haven't seen that many people of my color ever. Like... That was, that was an amazing thing. And when I got to the school, spoke to the coaches, and basically, I loved it. Every, I loved everything about it. It was, it was amazing. The teachers were nice. The classes were good. The people were nice there. And I was building bonds with teammates. And I was, I was building friendships and stuff, bro. I, I loved it. And I transferred there in November. And in December, my cousin LJ hit me up. He was like, Cam. Uh, why don't you try, why don't you try out for, I just found out that our cousin owns a 7 on 7 team. I'm like, cousin? Who the heck is our cousin? He was a 7 on 7 coach. So I tried out for Go Get It, made the team, obviously, because your boy is a baller. But, uh, when well, that first tournament, we ran a practice tournament and I got absolutely destroyed. I dropped so many balls. I was nervous and I had no confidence then. That's when I realized football is it a game of just being good at? Football's a game of mindset. You gotta have the right mindset to step out on that field. Cause if you don't, you will get exposed. I, I called up my mentor and I told him, like, I just, I was just dropping the ball. 
I was ready to catch it. It was get it to, get it to my hands, and the ball just fell out of my hands. And that's when he told me football's a game mindset, and that's when my whole mentality changed. And that's when the Miami tournament happened. Every Florida football team you guys see was there. South Florida Express, Miami Immortals, DEFCON, Florida Fire, they were all there. I was ready to ball out. I was ready to showcase my talent and prove everyone who doubted me wrong. And that's exactly what I did. I balled out that tournament and it got to the first playoff game and we were playing DEFCON. When I was lining up there, I had number one, and they were like, number one, what you gonna do? What you gonna do, number one? I was fired up, bro. We were losing so bad, but I just had this fire in me, bro, and I just loved the competition. I was running hard every single route, and I was, I just loved it. I loved going against the competition, and that's how I knew I have what it takes to play at the next level. I knew going, competing against guys like this, I could have what it takes, because I was beating them on some routes. I was beating them on everything, but these were dudes with stars. And I, I was as good as I am now. So if I'm beating these dudes with stars, imagine, imagine if I keep working, what I can do. Fast forward to the end of 7-on-7 seven seven season. 7-on-7 seven seven was good, but now it was time for spring football. Spring gets started, and what I didn't tell you guys about Atlantic, Atlantic was a really good score. They won the state championship, the Tri-County State Championship in COVID. So Atlantic was no trash school. They were actually a pretty good school. And I was coming to a to a powerhouse school in the area and I was trying to start on the team. So I had to compete to fight for that position because there was there were receivers out there. And what I didn't come in realizing, there were six senior receivers. Six. And that doesn't include the juniors. We had like three junior receivers. So spring came. Spring, I was working all spring. I was showing the coaches what I have, what it takes. And basically what happened is I was I was basically the second string receiver. And the receiver who was supposed to play, he got hurt. So I was playing spring. Uh, I, I had a good spring game. I had about two catches. And I caught the catch that would bring us to the end zone to win the game. And that, that was spring was pretty good. So I was pretty happy with spring. I was ready for the next step, to go to camps and showcase this talent. The first camp I went to was the FIU camp, and I absolutely balled out. I showed out at the FIU camp, and I did what I had to do. But what they won't tell you at these college camps is the truth. The FIU fields were split into two sides. One side was split into where the non-ranked kids were, and the other side was split to where all the real colleges wanted to see. The colleges were all the colleges were on the side of where all the recruits were at, and basically nobody was on our side. So what a lot of the recruits were doing was going the non-recruited were going to the other side where the recruited were. But uh, I, I didn't do that. I stayed on the side and balled out and did what I needed to do. I did what I could, and the videos are there to prove it. I was working those DBs, and that's all That's all that needs to be said. Keep flourishing, keep leveling up, keep doing what I need to do. And that's when I went to the Mercer camp, did what I did again. Still no off, still no still no contact by colleges. Went to, the, went to FAU, mic'd up. They got mad at that, but... Uh, I balled out once again, recorded it, put it on camera, put it out there for people. Uh, I should I should have done that. I'm going to say that right now. I should have mic'd myself up at the FAU camp. That was kind of disrespectful. I should have I should have let the coaches know I was going to be mic'd up. But uh, I went to the Charleston camp, Charleston Southern camp, and I was mic'd up. And that camp was a disaster for me. I got, I basically bombed the camp. I had a GoPro on my chest, and that's when I came to the realization of recruiting. The coaches did not like that I had a GoPro, and it didn't make them feel comfortable. I didn't know I couldn't do that, but I was just trying to capture my experience at these camps. That's all I was trying to do. But I bombed the camp, and I'm not going to say because of this situation what happened, and I wasted my chance at the camp. My mom drove all the, we drove all the way to North, we flew all the way to North Carolina to go to that camp, and uh I apologized to her. We slept at the airport, bro. We slept at the airport. My mom slept at the airport for me. If you guys wonder why I worked so hard, it's because of stuff like that. We literally slept at the airport because we couldn't find a hotel to sleep at. And I love my mom. She's been there literally through everything. Every single thing my mother has been there through since the beginning to the end. And I am grateful for that. And that's why I will retire my mother. But after camps, it was officially for the football season, which is what we were entering now. And we got ready for my senior football season. My 
senior football season, what can I say? I had a decent year. Our team did decent. Not, it was probably one, not one of the best Atlantic years, but we went five and six. We lost the first round in the playoffs to St. Thomas. And uh, I had a decent senior year. I got some highlights and everything I needed to get, but no offers once again. I was getting better and better. Yeah, I was still getting overlooked. And it's been like that all my life, so I'm used to it. That doesn't that won't stop me from working. I'm just getting I'm used to it, man. Uh, I know there's NFL players who've gone through what I went through with recruiting. Uh, all our stories are different, man. But I know mine will lead me to success, whether that's the NFL or somewhere else. And uh, I'm honestly going to be thankful for this journey. Senior year was over. And, uh, and basically, senior year, I have no traction in offers now. And this isn't the end for me. God told me what my plan for my life is, and I won't give up on it. And I honestly trust that he does everything for a reason. And we will get through this process. And I'm starting to me I'm getting ready to message schools now. It's February. And I'm honestly ready to take it to the next level. It's not about me. I don't do this for me. If I did this for me, I would have quit a long time ago. It's about supporting those around me, putting them in the best position to be successful. That's what it's about. Because I'm trying to create generational wealth for those around me and put my kids' kids in the best situation they can. And that's not even only in football. That's outside of football. Like, I'm trying to do things like you guys never heard of it. As a, as a black man, of course I have a disadvantage, but I'm not gonna let that get to me. I'm gonna keep working and put my family in the best position. And I will take you guys along to see that journey. And I honestly wanna thank you guys for watching this video, man. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what else to say. You guys stay to the end and I'm thankful for that. So I love y'all boys and you guys are officially known as the Five Fam. And let me know what y'all think of that name in the comments below, man. I don't know how this video is going to do and I don't really care because I got my story out there. And we're going to be a lot more consistent with the videos. This is only the beginning, man. It's Kev25 signing out. Love y'all boys. Here we go. At the top of the class on the road. And it's time to run.